Hi, I thought it was time for another out and about because we're having a bit of an Indian summer here in England and this is Cullern in Wiltshire which is about 10-15 minutes drive from me and um, the video winner comes up here and looks after the horse. Cologne's kind of a military town. I can't say I know it really well and this is um, the first sort of walk around I've ever done here really but it's really charming as you can see. Never tried this pub, I'll have to give it a go. As I've said before, this is very much the real southwest of England. This is what England is actually like when you get outside the city. This is a high street, which as you will see, isn't very populated by shops. A lot of these places are quite sleepy. Something you don't see much now and they're disappearing is a good old fashioned British telephone box. So for those of you who've never been in one, I'll just show you what the inside is like. It's nice to see there's a phone box still here because there are so few of them now and they used to be a common thing in my youth and you know, things change. Not always for the better. A lot of Britain is still like this. You know, you get different parts of the country of their own different character. I've been watching Survivors recently, the 1970s TV series, the Catastrophe series, which was written by Terry Nation, who created the Daleks of Doctor Who, and it was screened between 75 and 77. The BBC did a reboot a few years ago, which only lasted two seasons, despite featuring the delectable Julie Graham, who I'm always on about. A lot of it is filmed in rural Britain, and it's a post-pandemic story, so it's, like a lot of these things, very prescient, but the influences of Day of the Triffids, the urtext of the catastrophe novel, are all over it, you know. Even though Triffids wasn't anywhere near the first catastrophe novel, there were some things way before going back to Mary Shelley's Last Man. It sort of established really, in a very robust way, the true sort of paradigms really of the subgenre. Very beautiful, I think you'll agree. Yeah, so Survivors is largely fronted by an actor called Ian McCulloch, who later found a kind of infamy in Italian horror and SF movies of the late 70s, some which, which became video nasties, notably zombie flesh eaters and contamination. Very much in the summer, it's very hot at this point. I tend to dig out zombie flesh eaters or zombie dewey, as the correct title is, Zombie 2, and its sequel, Zombie Flesh Eaters 3 or Zombie 3. I know three is in Italian. And McCulloch's in the first one, he's also in Contamination, which is kind of an alien ripoff. And he got that work in Italy through Survivors, which was really popular. So ever I watched Survivors, which was bought for me by Paul Scott, thanks Paul for buying that for me, it's very, very kind of you. I keep flashing to <laughs> Italians, the idea of Italians watching Survivors, this sort of cold British survivalist, you know, <laughs> post-pandemic thing in sunny Italy. It's quite funny, really. It's really nice to be filming outdoors again. I tend not to go out very much when the school holidays were on and they ended about a week and a half ago because of course you know me I'm missing through I'm always saying Britain's overpopulated oh we've still got a hairdresser <laughs> how exciting you think and you know I do like the empty space as you're seeing here several people have commented on the channel saying you know you're always talking about there's too many people around Steve yeah I never see them in the videos just because I'm good at editing and good at avoiding them florist 
With the slow death of the high street in Britain because of the internet, it's quite interesting seeing what survives in small places. And, you know, it's not often what you think. There's, of course, village store, that sort of thing, you know, so. But, of course, these days you can get your shopping delivered. I mean, I do. It's an actual example of that. war narratives always have a particular power unlike those from other wars not to downgrade other wars but it is a, a thing very much in English literature and European literature generally whenever I go anywhere quiet in England to film especially if it's like on the off chances I haven't checked conditions it's always bin day so in the background you can hear the recycling lolly um lorry lolly you can see what's on my brain can't you I've got something like a lolly to have now so what I'm going to do I'm going to sit here a minute and chill out and I managed in the local corner shop 
to get haha a magnum no this is not an advertisement oh well In the early 80s, so circa 81, 82 in my hometown, Pontypridd, South Wales, we had a sort of alternative music scene which was quite vibrant. And one of the sort of strands was a club night called Room 101. You recognise the Orwell reference, of course. It used to take place at a club called the Georgian Club, which is funny because I live in a Georgian city now and Pontypridd that I come from is anything but Georgian. And it used to happen in the Stargazer Suite, which was the top floor of the club. It was every other Tuesday night. And the house band, they were called Blau Reiter, which is um, named after German art movement and expressionist art movement, the Blue Rider. And one of my favorite songs by them is a song called In Memoriam, which I hope to put some of in this video. And this is obviously a demo recording from 1981-82. And my friend Barry Goddard, who was the singer and frontman, he went on to have a career with a band called Knives. And he toured the world as Jimmy Somerville's backing singer. He was in Then Jericho. He occasionally sings live with the Sex Gang children. And he's had an amazing career as um, a painter, um, photographer, singer. And he's big in Croatia. He's a lovely guy. Actually. I haven't seen him for years. We are in touch. I do hope to see him sometime later this year. Yeah, so that's a little walk around Cologne, and you can see Bath there in the distance. That's actually Bath, Bath Ford, I would say, from here. That's where the occupier lives. Very nice for those who can afford it, very expensive for those who can't, as with Nolan and I said. Lots of bees, or maybe hoverflies of some kind. I'd say there were bees enjoying these hops. Are they hops? They look like hops. I may be wrong about that. And the more I look at them, the more I think they're not hops. There's a really nice trough just down here. And you know me, I do like a good trough. They have mythic resonance. I'm not sure why, but I just really love a nice trough. Horse tails. The primitive plants, which way back in the Devonian, formed the coal that my grandfather's dug. Of course, this is great for pond life, amphibians, which are seriously under threat these days I and mean, lots of amphibians are becoming extinct worldwide and mass amphibian extinction is always an indicator throughout all of geological time of climate change. <laughs>
So the video winner is looking after Dobzy the horse. That's not his name, it's just what I call him, Dobzy. Dobbin being an old sort of traditional English name for a chunky horse. I think it's time for a good sit down after that um, bit of exertion. And luckily here, in the bottom part of the field, we have a little bench. The book selling bulk strikes again. <laughs> beautiful day. There's a lone sheep at the bottom of the field. He's Dobbsy's companion. As you can see it's really nice here and this is often what the video editor does on weekdays when I'm filming or editing. She's up here with Dobbsy who moves to different fields at different times of the year. Not an equestrian man myself, it has to be said.